Adam, my dear friend, three simple questions. What is innovation? What are we doing here? And why us? Well, I'm not going to tell you in the very first few seconds what, what innovation is. This is basically the topic of our series here. Well, what we are doing here, well, this will be a series of um, bi-weekly sessions, short, very short sessions. Every 14 days, we will give you some tiny innovation hacks that will help you and your team solve problems faster with more fun run great customer interviews, and learn how design thinking can improve your user experience, customer experience. And why us? Well, you are right. There are like thousands of videos and podcasts from real innovators from all over the world. And now there are these two Germans with their heavy accent starting a video cast series on innovation. <laughs> who, who, are like, who are like all Germans, always punctual, have no humor, and are not creative at all. But I would say I see it a bit like bringing the best of two worlds together. The German engineering with its obsession for quality, reliability, security, if you wish. And the American spit of innovative risk taking. The let's give it a try and see mentality. Innovation in, made in Germany in a way. Well, and if the two Germans like Adam and I'm, by the way, half Polish and half German, and Peter can make it so everyone can. And we've learned the cool American innovation and ideation process and combined it with the German engineering, so to say, best of, the, of both worlds. And I've done lots of uh, workshops and uh, customer sessions. So there's not only kind of we have the background as being Germans and risk averse. We also did a lot of practice on that one. So I think we can, have, um, we can share all the experience that we have done in the, in the past. Um, but yeah. Adam, yeah. Yeah, every start... single session, every single session will be started by a surprising element, Peter. So be prepared for all the for all the crazy icebreakers and to warm up games because well, they are important and well, people keep asking us for for all these icebreakers and um, warm ups. And today's icebreaker is well, tell me the story of your name, Peter. What is the story of your name? That's one thing I hate about these icebreakers is that Adam told me he will never tell me up front. So I just have to do it spontaneously. So what do you mean? What is the story of my name? So the background of my name, who am I? Whatever. Oh, yeah, Peter Dern, the son. When I looked up for the name, firstly, this is really hard to understand. In Germany, we have many words that sound similar, like Bern, Stern, Gern, Fern. Nobody understands this. When I order a table, it's completely confused. Nobody knows who am I because the name is also so short. And I did some research and didn't find where it comes from. But I found a little hack. There's another like icebreaker hack uh, when I have to introduce myself. You know, Peter Dern, not familiar. This name is not very known over the globe, but there is a video or a movie um, for the older ones that remember it. It's Jurassic Park. And there has been this blonde actress, Laura Dern, who has but been- you are really Laura. <laughs> no, I'm not connected. Okay. When I say I introduce myself, hi, my name is Peter Dern. You may know the name from Jurassic Park, from this blonde actress, Laura Dern. I'm not related to her at all. And I don't have anything to do with dinosaurs, except that I have such a little thing here. Um, and this means people will, of course, have a bit of a fun hit and they will remember my name from then on. Of course, uh, it doesn't make sense that um, that I'm not connected to, or to Laura or have nothing to do with uh, um, dinosaurs, but it's a nice, I think, icebreaker and also kind of a hook to get my name memories. But I have no idea where my name comes from. Do you have an idea where your name, your name comes from? What Egger means? Well, I, I could tell you two or three stories of my name because, well, when I came from Poland, we were asked to um, kind of make the names that I used to have sound more German. And so I, my first name is Adam Christoph, Krzysztof in Polish. And it was um, made um, sound more German by, by making it a Christoph with an F uh, at the end, which is very unusual. And Egger is, well, a name that uh, we had to choose because the, the, the name that I used to have is, um, had a strange meaning, which was lover. So my my name was Adam Lover, which was isn't the the most appropriate name, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a nice one, isn't it? So your name is made up. 
my name is connected to a movie and yours is made up. So, okay, cool. But the idea of these icebreakers um, is this was just an example what you usually do also in workshops to get the things going, people talking, people sharing a bit of uh, stories around themselves, right? Yeah, that's basically the most important part. It's not about the process. It's about being human. It's about understanding that we connect uh, people, real human beings, not roles like you are the director of an SVP or to whatever. Hey, mm -hmm. we are all human beings and these tiny icebreakers and warm-ups are here to, to tell every person we are here to have fun with each other. So from now on every week, um, for those who have seen this series in German, we started a series in German similar to this one quite a while ago and now we're asked to move it to English. We also do it here in, 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 in the German one, but yeah. Lago Robles every week is a new surprise for me, for the icebreakers, and hopefully for you as well. Now, let's back to our topic today um, of not being innovative or innovation as such. Um, and I would like to take an example also maybe as a warm-up exercise for our brains to imagine a certain situation, which I think can illustrate it pretty, pretty nicely. So imagine we are back in the 1990s, and there is a market leader for oral hygiene who wants to develop a children's toothbrush. You or we all run a design company and get a job to design this new product. I would say my first idea could be, hey, come on, kids are small humans, little, little adults. So we just make the thing smaller with some nice color, job done. Or any other ideas? Maybe let's ask the audience, people who are with us today, what ideas they would have um, to come up with a blockbuster new product that is kind of chance to be, become market leader. And while the audience is perhaps typing things, Adam, what would you do if you Well, were every, every device is now connected to, to an app, so definitely connected to an app. Yeah, today. <laughs> For whatever in reason. In the 1990s, they didn't have these apps, but still, if we were today, then we would do this one. Uh, maybe but adding some it. buttons to, to make it more shiny and blinky, it would be probably my solution here back in the 1990s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any, any feedback or ideas from the audience already? Oh, tell us, know. tell us on YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever you listen to us, how can toothbrush be improved? Maybe let's make it that they already had in these days, the vibrating stuff, the rotating stuff. They could play perhaps a bit music. If this is in the, in the, in the notes where you play a little song and you have to listen to the song until it's finished to give you the, the brushing time, all these kind of things. But in the end, this may be not, that's not where we want to go. So we will reveal later what this company or based the real case, who was got a big name in the innovation space, um, what they have actually done. And um, this leads to a totally different approach what we see in a minute. But before we go there, a few words about the theory behind this, what we are showing in a minute. Well, it's um, what we basically want to show you in the series. It's, it's not about being innovative. If you look at the title of today's session, we try to teach you that not the idea of being innovative is what, what, uh, what matters in the end. It's all about something else. And to indicate what I mean, here is another picture. So they have created a path, a beautiful path here on the left hand side with a lot of light and maybe some benches. And they, um, they, they are pretty much happy with what they have created. And the stupid customers still do not use it. This is basically... For those who cannot see it, if you listen to the podcast, this is image shows a, a tart pathway where you could go with the bicycle or so, where there's no mud and dirt on it. But on the right-hand side behind you see a little village. And what actually happens is people go away from the path and walk across maybe the muddy grass to get from this path to the village, which is close by. And ignoring the plan of the constructors who built this wonderful, nice pathway. I, I yeah. love this picture. It's one of the best explanations to show in one picture what the idea is. Yeah, well, and the question that we ask here when showing this picture, what went wrong when they created this path? So what was the mistake that, that the creators made when creating the path on the left-hand side, which seems to be like appropriate, beautiful, and well lit? So what went wrong? You're building the perfect solution for the wrong problem. <laughs> yeah. 
like always, <laughs> the perfect solution, the perfect path for the wrong problem. You don't want to go there. They don't want to go somewhere else. But there is another picture that indicates what we mean in an even more um, visual way. Usually people try to create a great product. That's what we see like on, on daily basis. Everywhere we see that the idea is let's create something cool, something great. This is like basically what you see on this picture. This is the, the coffee, coffee maker yeah. that that could and should be definitely somehow improved to somehow uh, be the biggest uh, um, provider on the market. But that's not what we are talking about. The goal of what we do of innovation is to create a smile on the face. This is basically the world, the goal of everything we're doing here delighting the customer so the product is not what what we are here to uh, to create the product is here to create the smile on the face which completely changes the perception of the problem of or, or of the task given to teams it's not about the features but rather do we really create a smile on on her face yeah, i get the point so she loves the coffee that comes out of the machine and doesn't really care about the machine but look um you touch a point here with me and also maybe other who are a bit of coffee fanatics. Um, what if I like the bling bling, the many option buttons, the nice chrome surface, the ambient slide, all these fantastic features on the left side on the picture, the possibility to adjust the water temperature in micro degree steps, the perfect grinder, the nine bar pressure and so on. All these fantastic features. Yeah, look at, at Peter's face. Well, this is what the blinking elements are for. Um, to create a smile on your face. Your smile on the face when touching all these nice buttons, nice buttons and the surface, when adjusting the pressure, when and the temperature to the perfect levels, the result is still the same. The lady on the picture may be most delighted by the taste and the smell of perfect coffee and does not give a whatever how it's produced while you peter are most delighted by the perfect coffee maker <laughs> so what you say in other words is um, the functions and features are not there for the sake of functions and features that's when we start with it then they would most likely be there for the sake of functions and features they are there to serve a need and to create delightment or uh, happiness or whatever to make a big impact and then of course they need functions and features but it comes from the end it comes doesn't come from oh there is an empty space let's put another button here or let's add another light over here it needs to serve a certain purpose if i get you right yeah this is the so-called uh, desirability part so if you if you if you can see the picture it's the left hand side of the the three picture the venn diagram it's the people that need that we start every project with. We always want to start with a real human need. And then to add some technology, ask yourself by asking yourselves, can we build it? Can we actually build it? This is the cult, the so-called feasibility part of, of the innovation um, circles. And the third one is, can we make money with this? The so-called viability. Should we build it? So do they want it? Can we do this? And should we do this? Are the three questions there are, that are the basic three things for every innovation project. And back to the, to the coffee example here. Um, this means we do not say that product features are not important, as I said, it's basically quite the opposite. We just need to find the right features that are serving a big enough group of people who want it that are willing to spend enough money to get it. The big enough group, I think, is also important because there could always be someone out there on the planet who wants something. If we only focus on this one person, this wouldn't make a big of an impact. So there needs to be a large enough audience. We come to this in further sessions with enough business power to purchase what we then hopefully feasibility-wise can create. And um, nevertheless, Coming, starting from features is something that we see all over the place. You and I have done hundreds of uh, creativity workshops where uh, when we start in the first place, this was very often the biggest, uh, the biggest problem. And I think it would be great if we could share some examples of what we've experienced here and uh, what we've done differently. There are 
tiny examples and big examples that I could give you. Well, something like consultants telling you what features are missing in the product. That's basically wrong. That's, this is, again, starting with the, the product. Don't start with the product. Don't start with the features. Someone says, we really need a cool dashboard to show customers how great we are. Again, wrong. What is the desirability behind this? Start with a human need. Or you put more and more into a product idea because some people think it would be kind of cool or your competitor did it, so we should also, well, again, wrong. Start with a human being. And also, I, I spent a few days in, in, well, helping a company in Israel to um, solve a huge problem where they didn't know how to deal with a big project getting bigger and bigger. They had like 300 features killing the whole company at, at some point. And the idea that I brought in was to do less better. What are the three things, three tiny things that will give human beings behind the company um, the most value? So it's all about understanding what is it? What is the pain that is there that can be solved instead of creating a big list of like hundreds of features just to create something cool? So it always starts with a question. Who is it for? So what is the problem that we are solving? What is the problem and who is it for? Because problems are not existing without context. Always only human beings have issues and problems that need to be solved. And what is the problem or even perhaps the problem behind the problem? I mean, you mentioned this dashboard thing. There was another example, maybe we have it in a follow-up session, where people asked to create a fancy dashboard, but dashboard was not a solution. It was not a solution to any of the problems they had. In the end, it can mean that the initial request is off the table and actually something else needs to be done. But then if you find the root cause, perhaps do the right thing. Remember the path, which is a perfect solution for the wrong problem. People go across the lawn to get to where they want to. Um, this video approach, by the way, was also a bit like tested um, with your, this kind of thinking, right, Adam? I mean, the series yeah, exactly. So we didn't just start sending these, um, posting these uh, sessions. We just created the very first idea and tested it with partners, customers, colleagues all, from all over the world. And we told them this is what we plan and how can this be improved. So what is it that that would be great about this? What is it that uh, that is too uh, too short, too long? And in the end, this is what came out out of out of this. Don't make it too long, short, interactive, two people talking, no slides. Today we have a bit of an exception. We showed actually three PowerPoint slides, uh, but that's the usual, usually the exception. Normally no slides because PowerPoint tilts off your brain immediately. I would say let's get back to the toothbrush example, where the first idea would have just been make a small version of an adult one because kids are small versions of adults and make it a bit kiddish, like nice color and uh, blim blang music or so. But that was not what they have done. So they've done something what we also want to get you into um, with the series is really observe and try to understand what's the problem behind the problem. And actually when they did is make a small toothbrush, they did not solve the problem why kids don't brush their teeth. It's not only that they don't like the taste of toothpaste or they just, uh, it's too boring. It was just another thing. IDEO, the company who did it, just watched how kids are doing it. Observe. And what they found out is the kids had difficulties gripping the, 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 the grip of the toothbrush, like what I show here. So what they did is they just created a big knob for the hands, for the small hands of the kids, looked a bit different. And this was the, the breakthrough thing. A little innovation, just a bigger grip for the toothbrush made it possible they could hold it better in their hands, could get used to it in the early, very early ages, and from then on brush their teeth every morning or every evening without complaints. And by just doing this simple thing, observing what is the problem behind the problem, problem they created a big market impact. Oral-B was the, the company in these days, and they had huge success for quite a while. Of course, others copied it later, but this was a totally different approach. And if you Google for innovation, you very often find this example. Yeah, But now, okay, now that we know this, this is just today's only the teaser, so um, there's more to come in each session. If we want to make it short, we cannot explain everything in 30 minutes. But uh, for those who are watching the first one or listening to the podcast, how can you try it now out? What can we do? Or what could the people do that are listening to us, depending on their job 
what would be the next step from you? From my perspective, this tiny thing that we have shown you today, start, starting with the problem instead of starting with a list of features, can definitely change the way how you and your team work. So, well, um, if you think about an R&D team, if you're part of a, the, an R&D team where someone tells you, build this feature, just ask them a lot of questions. Who is the customer? Who, what is the pain behind this feature? How many customers have this problem? Can we have access to, to the customer to ask more questions? So what is the, how, how often do they have the problem? So what, why do you think this is the right solution? So just keep asking a lot of questions. If you're part of an R&D team where someone gives you a feature to build, just tell them to tell you the problem behind this. And if you are the product manager, product owner, if you're the person who used to or who usually gives people tasks like features to build, just switch your mindset here. This would be our recommendation, not to give a problem, a feature to build to the team, but rather a problem to solve. It's such a game changer. Don't give them a feature to build, but a problem to solve. This already will completely change the way how they think, how they approach problems. They will ask more questions. They will want to have more access to, to real human beings. This will allow you to build real desirable solutions that will be that are needed by the market. So these would be my recommendations here. Mm -hmm. So basically start um, with the end in mind, the, um, the result, the, the viable, feasible, great um, experience for a user that's out there. And then derive as a result, as a consequence of this one, what you need to, to have to get there. So to me, the key message today, and this is also what we try to summarize in the very end of each of the sessions, is for me, don't jump to a solution with a lot of features right away. And also don't try to look innovative or creative with that quick shot from the hip, like I just said in the first place, uh, human beings, um, the kids are just small human beings, so make small toothbrush. I would say instead try to understand the problem first, or better, the problem behind the problem. Well, Adam, honestly, this is not a secret and basically well known either. Um, but what I wonder is, it's, I see this hardly ever applied. I think my take on this is it sounds so easy, but without the right tools and the right techniques, even the simple insight is pretty hard to achieve. And that's why we run these sessions, to make all of you out there familiar with all the little hacks and the powerful methods and tools which help you in the end to become really innovative and much more creative. Having said that, what do we have next time? Today we were talking about the problem that we want to start with. But, but as you said, Peter, the problems do not just exist in the air. Someone has a problem and we want you to understand that every single project needs to be started with this person, with the person that we call Mary. That's why we will be talking about Mary next, next time uh, when we will be on air. But well, the idea is to understand, every, start every single project with the person and the problems or issues that frustrations that they have. And I mean, next time is the real start. I would say this was more like the opener, the teaser today. Don't don't jump to solutions. Okay, obviously, but now how? And the how starts in the next session, which is Mary. And the, the, the name, I love the name. In our company, by the way, this Mary is now something that everybody uses when we talk, <laughs> who's your Mary? Um, and it's funny to find out where the name comes from. There is also a real story behind it, but more to see next time. Adam, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it today. I did. And Two Germans we'll... talking innovation. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and without any humor, of course, and totally punctual. Not at all. <laughs>